everyone and welcome to Throwback Thursday. We are heading up on Valentine's Day, so I thought it would be fun to share sort of a romantic shabby chic. You could use this for anything really. It doesn't have to be Valentine's Day, but it would make a pretty Valentine. Today I am working with an older authentique collection. This is called Adore. I'm not sure what year this came out. I couldn't find a date on it, but it was a while back. But it is a beautiful collection and I had a few little bits and bobs left of it so I thought I would make an easel card. Isn't that fun? Kind of a mixed media easel card. So we've got a wonderful shaker frame here. This is Renee Bouquet's and I've just filled it with some of her little butterflies and beads from Buttons Galore and Buttons and a wonderful shaker mix called Fancy Gal. Here is one of those gorgeous Rene Bouquet's butterflies, little birdie flowers. This color is called Candy. And then embossed Rene Bouquet's. And again, this filigree heart is Rene Bouquet's, also heat embossed. A resin heart from Melissa Francis that I had in my stash. These are retired, but you might possibly have one or something that you could substitute in there. So this is seven by five, and then it opens up on the inside, and there is a pocket. And in the pocket, I have put a little tea wallet and some chocolates and a little demi tasse spoon and a honey stick. So that is basically the project. We're going to build it together for Throwback Thursday. Stick around and we'll get started. And at the end of this video, if you enjoy this tutorial and if you're enjoying Throwback Thursdays, if you would do me a favor and push the like button that helps other crafters find my channel and these videos so more people get to share in the fun all right hang on here comes the tutorial just one more thing make sure you stick around to the end of this video because that's where i'm going to announce the winner of my little birdie um, craft dies giveaway so don't go away you don't want to miss that I want to see if I can take some of the mystery out of putting a shaker element together for some of you. So what I've done here is I've stitched a four and a half by six and a half panel of my designer paper onto two different shades of pink. And I just did a straight stitch around my sewing machine. And then this shaker mix comes in a little cube. It has all the buttons and beads and you always want to Shake these up a little bit before you use them, but make sure you hold on to the lid because trust me, that makes a mess. Um, this is called Fancy Gal. And what I do is I just pile my elements up in the general area where I want to add my shaker. And then for this one, I had these itty bitty Rene Bouquet butterflies. And I took just three of those because really the shaker element is the focal on our card. So Here's my Rene Bouquet's frame with these beautiful wild roses that just go so well with this paper. And what I did was I used a Spellbinders large standard circle die to die cut um, clear card stock or acetate, whichever you want to call it. And you can see I got a little glue schmutz on the front of this, but we're not going to deal with that right now. This is scrapbook.com 8th inch foam tape it comes like this it is my favorite for shaker cards because it's narrow and even though you can see the foam tape a little bit around the edges i have a way that i'm going to fix that so i put three layers on here i've removed the top liner and i'm just going to position this and you want to make sure that you really are where you want to be because once you press this down this is done and just go around and press it all the way around. Now, to get rid of that little bit of schmutz, now I can come in with a damp paper towel and just gently, gently clean that. You don't want to press too hard because you don't want to separate your clear card stock from the uh, beautiful board frame. But this is how I do this. And I just go in and I kind of polish it up. And sometimes you have to do this more than once. If it's really tricky, you can actually use hand sanitizer. 
but look how pretty this is. And you don't really need anything in this other than your butterflies, which are so cute because they're sticking to the top. I kind of like that because of the static and your buttons and beads and such. So that is how I put together a shaker element like this. Okay, so to make this base, this is just a basic easel card. This is seven by 12 and I've scored it at two and a half and five and then uh, folded it and scored it again. I guess this is 10 and then we've got two inch here. So this is the inside of our easel card and I always like to start there. I've cut a slightly shorter than five by seven panel of this love always. And I'm actually gonna take this down. I don't know why I didn't do this before. I actually wanna take this down to six and seven eighths because I want just that tiny little bit of pink um, peeking through on the sides. And I have inked my edges with Gathered Twigs Distress Ink. So we're just gonna center this up here, which is that little tiny pink border kind of frames this, and I, and I like that effect. Then I took two one and seven eighth inch by one inch pieces of pink card stock and just scored them in half. And these are gonna be our gussets. So these are gonna go on either side, the folded edge, which is this edge, goes against the outside edge of your paper. And the, I love doing a pocket like this on an easel card because it acts as the stopper, but it's also very practical. You can put a gift card in there, you can put a little tea bag in there, you can put a little note card in there. And then this just folds up just like that. Then I have a one and seven eighths inch by seven inch piece of this gorgeous rose print. And this is gonna go on the outside of our pocket, just like that, okay? So you can see how this is going to work. And it stays in place better once you've got some weight on it. It's a little um, floppy until then. Then I took the text paper and I did the same thing. This is just under two and a half inches. And this is gonna go here, just like that. You just wanna make sure that you've cleared your fold. And then the same thing here. Not quite two and a half inches tall by seven inches wide. And this one goes on the top. So there's the basics of that. Now on the front, I cut a knot quite two and a half inch, and this is where I'm trying to make up my mind, which do I want? I think I really do want the keys here on the front. So I'm gonna just glue this down. On the front. and glue this down on the back. Because this is an easel card and it's out on display, I like to have all, all the surfaces covered. That's just my preference. If you don't wanna cover this back panel, it really, it's perfectly fine. So now we have this already very, very pretty. Now, to give this some height, we're going to take our image here and I want this to I want this part of it to be straight. And then I took another little image of this romantic couple in the apple tree and I matted it on the same pinks and I want to tuck this in right here. So, I'm going to kind of hold that in place. Add some adhesive back behind there. Just like that. 
looks good. And then I'm going to bring in my shaker, like so. And I remember, you don't want to go over the fold. So can you see how I'm just adding my adhesive along this bottom? I'm just going to pick this up. I want to be able to see my keys, maybe not quite a quarter of an inch because I don't want to cover up my lady. But I'm going to press that in place like that. So that's the basics. Now you come in, you add your flowers, you add your ribbon, you add your embellishments, but this is the basic layout. You can add a sentiment down here. Um, I have one of these big Rene Bouquet butterflies that I'm gonna add up here on the outside edge of the frame. So I'm gonna work on this for a little bit and I will come back and show you what I've done. But now that you've got all of this in place, you don't have to worry about accidentally adhering this to your easel so that it won't fold. But it's a fun way to do an easel card, just a little bit different. All right, so I got this all finished up. I really love the way this turned out. I just did a couple simple, really simple things. Um, a little cascade of flowers and a seam binding bow here. And then I embossed this Rene Bouquet's chipboard with antique gold embossing enamel. The filigree heart is done in shabby pink, and I just glued it, and I had this little uh, punch out piece from the collection that I put behind the heart. I had to cut it in half and trim it down to fit. And then this is a resin rose that I rubbed with some gold metallic wax and put in the center of that. So I know it looks like a lot, but it's actually just adding a few flowers and a little chipboard. Then along the bottom, this is also a Rene Bouquet's chipboard that I heat embossed with the same shabby pink embossing powder. And then a little cluster of little birdie flowers here and some gold twine. On the inside, very simple. You already saw this. I found a little sticker I thought was cute up there. And then I cut a um, six and a half, six and a half, six and a quarter by four and a quarter piece of pink card stock matted it, put a little piece of designer paper. This little piece is the extra that I cut off because it was eight inches long and I only needed seven. So I heat embossed this with the antique gold, put it on a sticker element from the paper and the little pocket room over here to write a sentiment. So that is it. A little chocolate, a little honey stick, a little spoon. Very, very easy to finish. So I hope you enjoyed this Throwback Thursday. Again, this is Authentique Adore. If you don't have this, any of their other Valentine collections would work or whatever you have in your stash. Okay guys, so now down to the real business. This is what you stuck around to the end of the video for. A Couple of weeks ago, I shared an unboxing video of my little birdie guest designer box with y'all and I showed you that they sent me two sets of these wonderful dies in my box. So I can't use two sets of dies. Maybe I have a friend who could use some extra dies. So for from those people who are subscribed to my YouTube channel and left a comment and live in the continental United States, I picked a winner and the winner is Teresa Korb. Congratulations, Teresa. I'm so happy for you that you won these. If you will contact me um, on Facebook Messenger and give me, go to my Kathy by Design page on Facebook and contact me via Messenger with your mailing address, I'll get these off to you. So happy Throwback Thursday. Happy Valentine's Day. This is Kathy Clement, Kathy by Design. I'm going to go get my craft on. Bye.